back. This is a very scary movie, and I don't mean that uh, as in it's uh, an actual scary movie. It's a scary movie to make for a lot of reasons, and that's kind of what's appealing about it is it's, it's, uh, it's a, a, a creative challenge bigger than I think any that I've ever been up against. That's really what was exciting about it is that it was a new genre for us to, to do, and uh, so this film was just like, you know, I mean, it was so far afield from anything we've done. There, there are parts of it that are really graphic, but it's really got a psychological undercurrent to it that I think is what makes it interesting. This is really a tragedy, but it has some really creepy elements, and you do feel this sense of isolation and desperation and sadness, but you really also understand love and friendship and just trying to survive. And in a weird way, there's a, there's a, a sort of an adventure movie that has this weird other character that it's, it's not a slasher horror movie but it, it ends up by being being somewhat in that in that department it's genre bending and it's also it's it, it's not as straightforward as saying you know oh there's um you know a killer or there's a villain you know the, the villain also uh, almost becomes human nature it's not so much about the vine that overtakes us it's about each other and how we go into our own worlds and how we just, in the end, I mean, I don't even know if we're even friends anymore. I don't know, you know? But that is what's amazing. You know, these people that are all of a sudden put in this dire situation aren't really even best of friends, you know? So it's like, it's a, already not a strained relationship, but, but a, um, a, a relationship of sort of um, technicality, you know, because they're on vacation together and then they're forced to, um, really deal with each other, you know? One of the things that was so interesting to me about the characters and, and what they what they go through and what they what they turn into is, I mean, they start as these sort of gorgeous, sexy, very normal, very real kids. And, you know, by the end of the film, they've turned into monsters. The physical transformation, you know, was something that I was really interested in. And in a weird way, you know, they're just as, you know, sexy, you know, which is, which is perverse and, you know, sort of, unsettling, yeah, hopefully, if it works. Again, it was uh, an incredibly scary endeavor because the only other movie that came close to this was Little Shop of Horrors. So typically movies about uh, man-eating plants tend to be campy and silly. Um, so I guess we have an opportunity there to make something original and different. And again, getting the right director uh, was a crucial piece of the puzzle. You know, I was about to go on vacation, it was August, and the book had just come out, and it was like it was my vacation book. The day before I was leaving, uh, my agent called me and said, ah, there's this project at DreamWorks, it's this thing called The Ruins. And I was like, the Scott Smith book? And I was 30 pages into the book, I was like, I love it. So, you know, it was, it was sort of a, a funny coincidence. Well, at, you know, at Red Hour, we like to work with first-time directors. I think we, I don't know how many we've done, but most of our movies seem to be with first-time directors. And uh, a lot of that just comes out of finding somebody who you think is talented. And, um, you know, Carter's a really accomplished photographer. And, he has an incredible visual sense, and uh, and Steven Spielberg uh, had seen Bug Crush, which is the short that Carter did, and um, and said you should check check out this guy. Bug Crush is an extremely disturbing, kind of realistic horror film done by a, a first time director, Carter Smith. And the more we talked about what tone we wanted the ruins to have, the more we began to reference Bug Crush. There haven't been very many films in a long time that scared me, and I'm, I'm a huge genre fan, so I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hard to please. And you know, and there was, and there was something very uh, 
raw and i mean violent and emotional and you know all of the stuff that sort of horror films had seemed to have left behind for for a while it's okay What interested us in the ruins, initially, Scott Smith sent us the first three chapters of the book and, uh, and an outline of what the rest of the book would, uh, would be. And we actually purchased it before it was published. We obviously liked the, liked the book a lot and, uh, and then wanted Scott to write the screenplay. And Scott is just such a, I, I think he's one of the best writers out there, both screenwriter and, uh, and novelist. In the script, he was able to sort of take the book and take the elements that he, you know, that, that were great about the book, but then create a, a compelling story. There was a lot of stuff that was that, that was in the script that, you know, it was almost in a way shorthand. Even working with the cast, because they, they all they all read the book. I mean, in rehearsals and when we were workshopping and just kind of improving stuff, you know, it was stuff from the book would come up. And even if it didn't, you know, make it into, you know, dialogue that's spoken on screen, you know. All of the performances are really sort of informed by, by the book. My character, Stacy, in the movie ends up cutting herself and being obsessed with his vine, but in the book, Eric is the one who becomes obsessed and infatuated with this thing. So I, um, I, I read the book and I took little tidbits for Stacy, but I also took things from Eric's character as well. And um, we kind of made it our own too. I looked at the novel until I realized that it, it wasn't Matthias who uh, broke his, you know, did the whole thing. So I, it's strange. I, I, it's like looking at uh, reading the book or the movie, the book or the movie. And my text is the script. And because it changes a lot, I'm, I have to work from the script. You know, Wood Carter and uh, kind of the whole production has done such, I think, such a, a remarkable job of, is given us the environment in which to um, kind of allow those little magical moments. You run as fast as you can, okay? I mean, putting the team together was, I mean, was such a, a, a pleasure because, I mean, you know, there was, a, there was, you know, there was, a, there was resistance from, from a lot of people at first, just, oh, it's a horror movie, you know, uh, oh, I'm doing you, want, I don't know if I want to do a horror movie, but I think, you know, in, in a way, that was that was great because that got rid of everyone that shouldn't be doing the film. My name is Darius Kanji. I'm a cinematographer on this film, The Ruins. I was laughing with Carter all the time because he's a photographer also. It's something that I've been doing every day for, you know, 13, 14 years as a photographer. So, I mean, you know, I'm, you know, framing up shots all day, every day. I'm very used to just saying, no, 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 the, you know, the, the camera should be here and a little lower and, you know, maybe this lens. I mean, it's something that I'm, it's just a language that I'm, I'm sort of used to speaking. So, um, and what's great about, you know, a DP like Darius is he's, you know, completely open to it. And it's all about collaboration and, and you know, and sort of, uh, you know, work finding it together. I always photograph very, very pretty, natural, but very beautiful. And um, I always, also, I always take care of actors, actresses, make them look beautiful and all that. And suddenly, for the first time, I really wanted to not make them look beautiful, really go for the, the gritty, uh, gritty look. We had worked together before, and um, there was something to him, I think, about shooting a really horrific film in broad daylight. You know that that you know is something that he hadn't seen before, and you know I haven't seen before, and you know it's a challenge. I mean, how do you make this stuff really frightening and scary? You know, at one o'clock in the afternoon, you know, front lit. We're talking really from the beginning about shooting as much as possible with natural light and shooting with real locations, and not recreating everything digitally. We're not diffusing the light, and we're not. You know, I mean, it's it's. It's harsh, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's harsh visually and it's harsh emotionally and it's, you know, there, there's a lot of elements to it. I think that there's something nice about, uh, you know, 
letting someone else frame something and, and seeing how, you know, and seeing how it looks, because I mean, I'm not always right, you know, and then, some, and then saying like, that's perfect. I would have never framed it like that myself. And, you know, and now we have that beautiful shot because you framed it, you know? Sunny Australia. One of the challenges of this movie was finding the perfect location to build our hill. So to avoid being on stage, because we could have just built this hill, let's say, on stage and put blue screen all around the hill, and you know it could have been a completely digital background. But in that case, then your actors really would be almost too comfortable. This story, too, has a lot of elements, natural elements. You know, it's all about sweating and feeling that heat and, you know, not being able to have water. And, like, all those things are, are made that much more real when you can, when the sun's beating down on you for, for eight hours, you know. I mean, when you're up on top of a hill in the middle of nowhere, that reads for the audience. It just feels much more real. One benefit to being at really one location is that, you know, you know exactly where the light is good at which time of day and you know you, you know exactly where you can start and you know exactly where you end up and you, I mean it's a very precise schedule you know the challenges are are probably pretty obvious here at like 2:30 as we're sitting here like basically the sun has gone down behind the mountain and our our day of daylight shooting is done there's there's something so pressing about you know the sun slipping behind a mountain that you know that forces you to make quick decisions and to you know and to, for everyone to really be on their game. The you know the downfalls are it's freezing cold you know there's it's like it's hard to get out there it's hard to get equipment out there it's like in the sun there's no shade there's no there's nothing it's it's very exposed it's very extreme but um. But all of that, you know, works and feeds into the stories and the, you know, the inner life of all the characters. It's so beautiful, but it's freezing, freezing cold. And it's supposed to be hot in summer and sweaty, so they have us in these little tank tops and freezing, so they'll come in spritz, the spritzer, and olive oil, which is probably here, a lot of, <laughs> and so that gets a little uncomfortable, but I mean, I'd rather be outside in the beautiful environment and have them spritz me freezing to death than in a dusty studio, not real place. For the tone of the film that, that, that we all wanted, you know, I, I really, there was no way to, you know, to shoot this on a stage, you know? I just don't think if it was, if it was lit, it would be a completely different film. And it might have been a great film, but it just, it wasn't the film that I was, you know, interested in, in, in making. It is intense, like you walk away from that movie like really, like wow, like you went through an experience. You know, the, the film is a nightmare, and it's, 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 it's a nightmare about things getting worse and worse and worse, and it, it really is an unrelenting downward slide. I don't think that there's any stigma to, you know, to horror films, I mean, you know, some of you know other people have been like is that a horror is it how about a thriller I'm like, I, you know i mean I, I call it what you want to i mean it's you know it's a scary film you know that will you know that's gross and that's scary and that's tense and that's real and you know i don't have any problems calling it a horror film